Hey guys, Arcade Adam back here with another video. And in this one today, it's Extreme Home Arcades versus Rec Room Masters. We're gonna build their brand new 32 inch two player stand up arcade under new ownership and uh, see how it compares to the old Megacade back there. Get ready, cause here we go. <laughs> Okay guys, as I said in the uh, intro to the video, Rec Room Masters DIY kit, 32 inch, under new ownership, welcoming, welcoming them back. Uh, if you guys were familiar with them uh, back in the day, I guess I should start from the beginning. I'll run through a short history here, so bear with me for a second before we dump, jump in. I gotta set the scene for you guys. So I started getting into this arcade hobby maybe seven-ish years ago, uh, around 2015, so seven, eight years ago, I stumbled across uh, Rec Room Masters. They had the extension uh, product line where they had several products with that name. They had a stand down, or a stand down, sorry, excuse me, sit down, Vulix style cabinet. Uh, and at some point they made risers for that. So that was more of a converted to a stand up cabinet. Then I believe the first one I bought before they went to the 32 inch, which is what's in there. Um, I'll flash this stuff on the screen too, because I've built quite a few of these things. Um, the first cabinet I bought was a 24 inch kit that used the X arcade tank stick, which was a different company. They were making uh, turnkey full arcades along with the tank stick. They're still out there. They are, um, they're still selling coin doors and accessories. I think the tank stick um, might be, I'll, I'll, I could be mistaken. I think I saw that they may have stopped selling the tank stick recently. Uh, I'll put link in the description if they're still around, but basically it's a ready to go control panel. It's got an eye pack inside. Rec Room Masters uh, started by creating cabinets that didn't have control panels and you would bring your tank stick or you could build your own, of course. So they have a long history is my point. So they got um, cocktail cabinets. They had stools to go with the cocktail cabinets. They had Vulix. They had a 24 inch arcade. They eventually came out with this thing, which is a 32 inch uh, stand up arcade. That was a modular system that had basically three types of control panels. You had a plain Jane two player. You had a, uh, I, what is, I forget the name of it, but they had like emulator plus edition, which was more of the Megacade style. It had a spinner. I believe it had a dedicated four-way. It did not have another analog joystick, but it was still just two-player, but it had uh, more buttons. It had like an admin panel over here. Again, I'll put this stuff on the screen if I've got pictures of it. Um, so they had a standard two-player, um, and then they had a two-player with no trackball. They had an emulator edition with four-way and spinner. Uh, and then they also offered in that same footprint a four-way, which I never experienced in person myself, but it just looked cramped. Uh, I think the player three, four only had four buttons, if I remember correctly. So point being, they had a lot of options. It was modular. It was a DIY kit. It came shipped like this, flat pack. Uh, I think it's okay to mention the previous owners' names, Wayne and Denisa. I worked with them a lot. Um, like I said, when I started, I built one for myself. I kind of got hooked. Uh, my buddy asked me to build one for him when he saw one. Then my co-worker started asking me for these things. And I kind of just became known as the arcade guy. I kept building these things for friends, family, word of mouth people, and a few folks through Facebook, stuff like that. I probably built somewhere, if I had to put money on it, somewhere between 20 and 30 uh, of these machines from these guys over the years. Uh, and Wayne uh, was the previous owner. Denisa did the graphics uh, and artistry. I'm don't, um, not sure what her title exactly was other than graphic artist at the company, but I worked with both of them a lot. They were great people. Wayne stood by his product. I think one time UPS managed to kill one of these things. I believe I had a cracked piece of plexiglass because uh, that's what's used to cover the screen. And he just shipped out a, a new one instantly as soon as I emailed him about it. 
I think that's the only time I had to uh, work with them on an issue. No, I take that back. Uh, they shipped me the wrong artwork once. And I just asked for the artwork. I could put it on myself. I, I felt capable of doing that. And Wayne just shipped me a whole new panel. And it goes together like Ikea furniture. So any idiot like me can put these things together. Don't be intimidated. If you think you can handle putting together a computer with the arcade games you want to play on it, that's really all that's required. Because building these things is just like Ikea furniture. Love it or hate it. I happen to be <laughs> one of the former, so <laughs> that's my jam. I, I don't mind this at all. So that's the quick backstory. Now, the new part of this is uh, during the pandemic, uh, Wayne just uh, folded the company. There was some rumors, there were some reasons. We don't need to go into why exactly, but uh, fast forward to today, there's a new owner, uh, Carlos, who I reached out to when I saw that he was bringing this thing back to life because there was some rumors and it was really weird coincidence. Uh, I, you know, my background, if you guys uh, hadn't heard, i am been in the IT and in the cybersecurity professional industry for a long time now. And one of, you know, I kept tabs on the domain, honestly. I was looking at the transfer of ownership and I saw that there was some, some moving and a shaking and all of a sudden, the domain popped up and then the website got updated and then he started uh, collecting uh, email addresses if you wanted to be alerted for when they came back. So th that was like a year ago and now fast forward to a couple months ago, he's in full swing. You can buy machines. He brought back the 32 inch version uh, in several different configurations. And then he also posted some helpful YouTube videos. He made some updates to the design that I'm excited to check out. So there's a new uh, way to mount the screen. Oh, also, if you can't see back there, I went with a 32 inch uh, LG Ultra Gear G Sync monitor. So, like, you really, in my opinion, you can't do much better other than an OLED, but I don't know if do they make a 32 inch OLED. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But, point being, uh, monitor, that's the way you want to go. You can get the $100 32 inch Best Buy TV, of course, but your input lag, your latency is going to be atrocious. So, uh, this was, in my opinion, reasonable. I think this was a recertified model for just over 100 and I think it was like 130 or 140. I'll put link in the description. I want to say MSRP on this thing was extremely reasonable for variable refresh rate, G-Sync, LG Ultra Gear. Um, and I think it supports HDR, but it's like not the good kind, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But anyway... 32 inch, I think it's reasonable. Uh, another 60 bucks over the cost of just a crappy TV. Get her done, in my opinion. So anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get into this. Like I said, um, finish up my housekeeping here. Carlos sent me this for review. Uh, it is, uh, so I did not pay for this. He is not going to audit the contents of this video before it goes up. And uh, what else do I wanna say about that? I'm not being paid to review it. I just received the product for free and I am excited to compare it to all the previous 20 or 30 builds, like I said, that I've built over the years of this thing to see the updates he's done. I'm excited they're back because it's a great alternative solution if you're ready to roll your sleeves up a little bit instead of go with something that's turnkey and arrives at your doorstep and it's good to go. So options uh, and <laughs> competition in the market, there's room for everybody. It's awesome in my opinion. And I don't even know <laughs> what artwork he sent me. I know we, we briefly talked about it. I think I even, I complimented him on some of his options because he had some, in my opinion, better artwork than the old company. But I don't even know what's in here, guys. So let's get stuck into the, the boxes and the unboxing and see what we got. I, should we do the control panel first? I'm pretty sure it's in there. Or should we do the side panels and see the side art? I think we should do the side art first. Let's do that. Let's open up these first. Okay, guys, uh, hopefully the editing makes sense in this, but I wanted to just jump in real quick and give my initial impressions. I think I forgot to mention that Wayne and Denisa, uh, the, for the former employees I work with uh, at Record Masters, were... Um, probably the best packaging experts I've ever dealt with for even even like Ikea stuff the, they packaged it better and I honestly this is a good first impression he's using really hard edge 
cardboard and air pack uh, blister packs to protect the artwork in there because I think this is the uh, side art for the bottom pieces. Uh, but I just wanted to show the unboxing experience real quick as we do this. So all first, uh, good first impression. Just wanted to point that out. Okay, again, now that we're in, like I said, super tough cardboard edges to protect against your UPS man that you guys don't tip. More plastic straps to keep it all tight together. This is something new. Uh, that is, that looks like it is, yeah, that's burnt. Is that CNC would in? That's, that's almost like a, a Dremel etched. That's etched into the wood. So you got part numbers is my point. Um, the uh, old Rec Room Masters stuff did not have that. I want to say they had like stickers at one point, but I think he gave up on that because the stickers would fall off. Not like it's impossible to figure that out, but for the person who's never built one of these before, that's nice. So let's see if we find some instructions that maybe reference those as we go deeper in here. Okay guys, back again real quick. I uh, just wanted to show the type of wood that is. So this is a melamine black finish. It's not MDF, it's that particle board. Um, I'll let you guys fight it out in the comments whether you think which one is better. But very solid. Look at the crisp edges on here to the point of like, that's sharp. <laughs> it's very nice. It arrived in pristine condition. This thing is like razor edge uh, crispy there and there, look there's barely even any dust on it that was the the old rec room masters kits i think they had more dust um honestly and i was wrong this is like the interior pieces that's the keyboard tray and these are more uh rectangles that kind of build up the in the inside uh middle panels of the cabinet if you will so i'm gonna get these out real quick and set them aside because i want to see this artwork <laughs> oh and one other thing i wanted to mention because they packaged it so well, it was it took longer to unbox the old Rec Room Masters uh, builds than it did to build them. Like that, that's how much packaging they had. Like you can see, you know, I'm having to use, excuse me, a really sharp knife. Be careful, take my time. You saw me use my hands to, you know, Hulkamania that open because I didn't want to scratch it. It's real easy to whoops with a, a nice sharp knife like that. And I didn't want to take any chances. So that's why I did that. Um, but yeah, let's get back to it. All right, I'm sorry I keep stopping, but I keep seeing improvements. Uh, Carlos has definitely improved the design. There are pre-drilled holes for your speakers. That was not a thing before. And the keyboard tray is a much better piece where, see how that's a painted black edge now? And I believe the old keyboard tray was a piece of pressed MDF and it was bare, you know, brown material on the other side. And now it's painted on both sides there. You can kind of, if that focuses, there you go. See how it's pressed MDF instead of the particle board stuff. Um, just want to keep pointing out the upgrades <laughs> and differences uh, between the old kits. And I'll flash my old builds here and there in the screen when I edit this video, uh, just to show you guys some examples. Cause like I said, I did build quite a few over the years, but let's get back to it. Okay guys, time in one more time. Uh, here's the Plexi I was talking about. And uh, admittedly the old company would change suppliers all the time. Uh, and I'd get different pieces from different companies. Uh, notably this is uh, I believe this is shorter. So I think he's changed the design on how the Plexi covers up the monitor. And then I also wanted to show you guys, see, this is what I was really excited about. Uh, this is the biggest change I noticed on his YouTube videos. The uh, vase amount and um, positioning and adjustment uh, for both vertical and then also tilt. Because modern screens are super thin these side pieces, from what I saw in the video, allow you to bring the monitor closer and further back, depending on your preference. Like in an arcade, 
you know, it's just, it's a matter of personal preference because I have mine set back just a little bit from the tinted glass. Whereas, you know, some people bring it all the way up so it's touching the glass and some people push it way the hell back like the old ones, like Terminator 2 style, where it was, you know, a foot and a half off the glass. <laughs> so, like I said, personal preference, but at least that gives you a uh, hobbit hand for scale, maybe two and a half inches two inches for sure of adjustability forward and back. Uh, so that's cool. That's really cool. And also this gives you an upgrade option later down the line. Uh, I know in one of my machines, I believe in the machine, my personal machine that I used uh, for myself uh, mainly, I upgraded to glass. I got a piece of tempered glass at one point. I believe it was tinted too. So that's something you can upgrade on your own. You just take your dimensions off of that if that fits perfectly and then go to your local glass shop and i want to say i paid i want to pay 65 ish dollars for that for a piece of tempered glass so pretty reasonable upgrade and it just you know the weight of it the feel of it um when you're really jumping on your machine the plexi can move back and forth and you can hear that that's really the only negative to plexi in my opinion and all that and if you go at it with a paper towel of course it scratches like no other Depending on what that is, acrylic, plexi, you know, you guys can debate in the comments what is better, the Kleenex of plastic glass. <laughs> anyway, I'll keep uh, unboxing this stuff. I just wanted to mention that. Okay, guys, right before the big reveal, uh, one more thing I wanted to point out. <laughs> Oh, I'm actually, I'm still noticing stuff, but uh, packaging, A plus still. I mean, I haven't done the control panel yet. There were some things that the old company used to do that I hope he still does, so we'll see. But man, see how he's got the um, super hard cardboard edges on the outside, and then the, the straps are on the outside so they don't dig into the wood. And these things are super tight, and he's using a ton of them. He spent mo time, money, and effort on his packaging. And then also... This is a new piece. <laughs> what is that? I don't, is that just a, pro... like a filler piece to protect? That's, that's to see, this is new to me. Oh, it's getting exciting. I'll see what kind of artwork we got. Yeah, this isn't even labeled. So is this like a intentionally left blank, but there's team molding on it. Oh boy, mystery, love it. <laughs> but anyway, um, slot for the shelf uh, which is great because the shelf in my opinion on the old system was one of the weak points where I, I think it deserved more of a drawer slide but that's definitely reimagined redesigned that looks a little more robust this is where the cams go up inside to attach the top to the bottom yes this is a two-piece so once you build this whole thing you can move it around easily because you can take the whole top half off move that around and then the bottom half is its own separate unit kind of like a golden tea pedestal sized thing so anyway let me stop talking and let's do the reveal on the artwork <laughs> Well, maybe there's some artwork on the control panel. So uh, I guess I gotta do my own artwork. <laughs> Fair play. All right, so uh, like I said on the website, you can order these blank and you can order them with uh, artwork pre-installed. And I got the former, so here we go. Right, guys i'm trying to bring you back all the details and major changes from the uh, uh the other the older rec room masters cabinets and i just wanted to point out i did receive just a tiny bit of damage it's not a big deal because this is the inside panel you'll never see this chip missing and then whatever happened in this corner the t moldings pulling up a little bit but i'm guessing if i get, try to do this one-handed and give it a good whack yeah if I come back with a, a mallet that'll go right back down so it's already 
going into the corner. And then on the other side, it's much nicer. Let me show you, see, that's the outside. Looks totally fine. The only other thing I'm noticing is you can see these pops in the melamine. And in the old Rec Room Masters design, these holes were drilled straight through. You had bolt holes, uh, bolt heads showing on the outside of your cabinet. So if you look closely at the website, um, there are, are literal hex bolt heads, flat ones, that went through the artwork and they actually went on top of the artwork. So you had little black spots. And so, but his design has these not drilled all the way through, except on this one it is. So maybe that's just a mistake in the machining because it feels like if you were to put a bolt through here, this would just pop out. Like the only thing holding this on is the melamine itself. Like it's drilled all the way through here. There's a hole on the other side. See? Um, so we'll have to see what the instructions say or what the, the design is with that. But I'm guessing this is no big deal because like I said, the bolt will go through here and the bolt head will cover that whole thing. And that's how it's supposed to work. So we'll uh, see what that looks like when we start to build it. Okay guys, um, I just opened up the box with the control panel. And uh, this is <laughs> nostalgia. It's hitting me hard right now because this is the tried and true. Uh, oh, I think this is probably all of the hardware. Oh yeah, shakes good. So yeah, the, this is the emulator uh, edition plus is what I was talking about earlier. So you have your admin panel over here. Oh, cool. He's made some changes with mouse exit, pause menu, player one start. He's moved some of these around. Dedicated mouse buttons is new. I'll have to show a picture here <laughs> on the screen to compare, but I'm pretty sure that's a little different. And then this looks like, oh yeah. So we've got USB lighting for the marquee. That was the next question. I didn't see a piece of plexi for the marquee, unless I missed it. Is it in with this piece? Nope. Oh, interesting. Again, guys, this is a review unit, so it might be different than what the standard issue is, but all feels like the same old, same old, all haps, gated four-way. That's definitely an Ultramark spinner. <laughs> just loud and proud Altamark uh, trackball. Uh, now that I know what I'm talking about, I have since preferred, uh, moved on, and I, 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 you know, for trackballs, I prefer the HAP trackball. Um, nothing against the functionality of the HAP is fine. It's just that I prefer, you know, it's like the difference between IL Euro joysticks and HAP joysticks. On the surface, they're the same thing, but once you get used to one and try the other, you might have a preference by back and forth, that kind of thing. Functionally, they're all gonna play the same game, and when you don't get the shot in Golden Tee, you can blame them both. <laughs> or you don't get the Hadouken, whatever it is. But yeah, let me get continue getting this out of the box and we'll take a closer look at it. Okay, this is awesome. So uh, I know this maybe this lighting sucks because the lights are behind me. I'll try not to make shadows and give you a close up. Uh, but like I said, four way, you can tell it's gated. So it's only clicking and go that way. If I go diagonal, silent. So, excuse me, gated four way. Got your ABs over here, your ABs over here, your ABs over here. So no matter where you're resting your hands to do your spinner, your eight way or your four way, you're good to go. Got your trackball. Um, here's your uh, player one eight way on and off because when you start wrenching your hand through here, they have a switch to kill the eight way in case you start bumping things if you get too excited playing your Pac Man or your spinner games. So, very nice addition. Um, I will overlay the old admin panel. Like I said, there's been some changes. These buttons light up, or at least they used to, so I'll have to confirm that. Inside uh, used to be an iPack Mini, 
So you could load that, um, it still functioned the same as like an iPack 2. Uh, you had those firmwares where you could switch mode between keyboard mode, D input, and X input. Um, player 2, like I said, all of your Player 2 coins select start over here. These are not, um, these are slightly different. They're not HAP. I don't well, know what these are, but these are all always like a different lighted button. Um, and they look nice. On my personal system that I had, my extensions uh, system before I got the Megacade, I had swapped out all these buttons for RGB buttons. I had RGB joysticks, and I believe I had an RGB track, yeah, I had an RGB trackball too. But I kept these buttons because they just lighted up, pure, uh, I think they were just pure white, if I remember correctly. And now for the new things that I noticed. So when I unbox this, he's got some creature comforts that the old company didn't do. Check this out. Pre-wired for what I assume to be, uh, yeah, that's definitely two buttons. So that's gonna be your flipper and magnet save if you want side buttons. So you would just drill. I didn't look at the side panels. They're not pre-drilled, are they? No, there's no holes in there. But it does have, I don't know what these pre-drilled four holes are, but there's no point being there's no uh, pre-drilled holes for buttons in the side, right? Because that's still dropped, yeah. So the way this mounts is you've got these holes that go straight through. Um, bolts go all the way through, mount to the control panel. So the, the bottom of this control panel goes down into the arcade. And so the wall of the control panel will be underneath here in the fit and finish. So these wires would have to be pulled out through the side and then your buttons would be mounted somewhere about out here uh, if you wanted those. But that's just cool that they're pre-wired. You don't have to open this thing up and do your own T-splits, because I'm guessing he wired them to uh, the same thing as some of these. So they're probably not additional inputs, is my guess. They're probably just split off of some of these buttons. Uh, and same on the other side. So you've got these over here, which is a cool feature. And then uh, this should be, I didn't look at this too closely when I was lifting it out, but yeah, standard two USB uh, configuration. One USB is going to go straight to your iPack or iPack Mini, whatever's in here. And then the other USB will go to uh, an HID board. I believe it was went straight to the trackball or went, went to the spinner. One of, one of each. Uh, because the iPack Mini only has one mouse source input, if I remember correctly. Um, and that's why you needed the second USB port. I think. And then they uh, used to branch power for the L LED buttons over here. It's all coming back to me slowly. I will, like I said, I'm going to layer pictures all over this video and compare to the old ones because I had, the, like I said, I had these things all tore apart. I did custom artwork for people so you can just lift up this plexi and just swap this artwork out. You got to take all your buttons and joysticks out, of course, but it's still, it's totally doable. But this is the default art you get. And the other thing I wanted to mention, remember I said I couldn't find the uh, marquee? It's right here. <laughs> Here's your default marquee. It matches the control panel. And that was this, you know, you have options if it's like the old company, gray, red, and blue, if I remember correctly, um, just for a basic art package. I think this was included in the base price. I don't think that's extra to get that, but it's... A new company, so take that with a grain of salt. Uh, but that's the way it used to be. You could ha you get this and that, no matter what your art. If you don't get any artwork, you still get that. Uh, okay, so now we've got everything unboxed. We just got the that's the bag of hardware. Everything survived really well. There was just that one little corner I showed you guys of damage, and uh, yeah, let's get to building. Um, I have had a timer running this whole time. I've been you know you, you'll see the footage, but. I am unboxing carefully, I'm cleaning up as I go, and the un unboxing alone, uh, let's see the timer, that took just under 45 minutes to unbox all that stuff at that pace. So there you go. See you guys in the building part of the video. Hey guys, uh, I hate to tease you and do this, but um, first of all, thanks. If you made it this far in the video, you're a true OG, because uh, I was editing this and all of a sudden 
I look down at the timestamps. We're 29 minutes in, in change, or whatever it is. So, and we didn't even build this thing yet. And I want to take my time with this, because there's, there's just so much uh, involved with, I think, doing this review properly, because there's the, I wanted to take my time with the unboxing experience, because I think that's really important in a product like this, because uh, I think the challenges with a lot of other companies is getting it to you safely. And, and I, th I think that's one of the, strengths at least in the past it was with Requiem Masters and then now with my review unit uh, as you saw the thing is packaged extremely well and here let me turn the camera around so you can at least see this thing while I'm talking um, there we go let me back it up and also I pulled my Megacade forward so we can get a sense of scale uh, here I'll try to back up a little bit so you know you can see the height let me kind of go in the middle here and pan around because I wanted to compare directly just so you guys get a sense of the size of this thing and then also my racing sims are in the background and youtuber equipment and what have you but anyway there's some things I just wanted to point out about this setup that are just really cool and I, I will go into the whole you know I've got a lot of video about how I built this thing about how I've got uh, one of the brand new Pandora's boxers running in here that's really really easy and simple uh, and cheap uh, to get set up and running well. Um, and then also I wanted to go over some of the other things I didn't even mention in the unboxing video. There's just so much more detail, like I said, that I have since found out because I, want, I went into the unboxing a little uneducated because I wanted to experience it that way and just, you know, compare to my previous uh, experience, you know, several years ago. I think the last time I built one of these now is yeah, it was pre-pandemic, so it was three years already. That's crazy to think about that. That's just it's weird how time flies <laughs> these days. But anyway, oh, you can see me in the reflection. But hey, um, I'm going to cut the video here. So thanks for uh, making it this far, if you made it this far. I'm going to release part two is going to be how to build this thing. We're going to go into more detail on the keyboard drawer, on the controller, um, and the speakers, and the lighting, and the marquee, which I forgot to turn on. Um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Editing Adam here. One more thing, because it wouldn't be complete without, um, and again, I, I have to stress, this was a whoopsie on my part, you know, because I'm known for whoopsies, I guess, now. Uh, in the build video, we'll, uh, we'll show you what I did wrong and uh, how I fixed it. <laughs> that kind of stuff, and then I'm, I'm going to put a coin door in. So we're gonna take this nice and slow. I'm gonna have another video coming out on the build process and the monitor, all those things I mentioned that were upgrades because I wanna make sure I get that point across. But one thing I did want to address real quick since it's staring us in the face that I didn't notice during the unboxing process, but if you look close at this and you try to keep in mind some of the um, control panels that I overlaid on the screen during the editing process, the new Rec Room Masters controller, and let, let's be clear, these things were tanks, they were awesome, and they're sought after in the community when Rec Room Masters went missing for a couple of years because these are just really well put together. I mean, you saw the wiring picture I put up. It was immaculate. So um, the one thing I didn't notice when I first unboxed this thing, they undermounted the hardware. There's no screws around the joysticks, around the trackball, and anywhere else this whole thing it's just clean look at that other than my smudgy fingerprints <laughs> it's perfectly clean i should have went at this with a uh, microfiber sorry guys but hey this is this is it is what you get it's plexi so if you uh paw at it it that's you know just like this one it's the same thing but anyway um i digress let's uh, focus on what i was trying to say here they've gone to il euros it's like, and then these switches are different because they sound a little different, but the motion and the feel, they're not haps anymore. Because the first thing I grabbed was this four-way, and this just feels like a regular old hap. And I didn't even notice I all Euro sticks. And I haven't confirmed yet, but I'm pretty sure that's still an Ultimark trackball. And Ultimark spinner for sure, well, spinner top. Um, so again, 
I want to take my time. I'm going to probably do an even separate third video on taking this thing apart and going at it from the back and showing you the wiring. Because the amount of footage I've shot just building this thing is probably good for another at least 15 minutes. But, you know, me and my time estimates, I got like some Elon time scale kind of things going on. So it's got to be a half hour probably. Um, and I didn't want to make anybody sit through an hour long video. So we're going to cut it here. Uh, come back for the build video in a couple days. Uh, and I'll upload that. Um, and we'll do some gameplay. I'll show you the Pandora's box, how easy it is to get it to work. Literally, guys, it took me like two minutes to convert this thing. There's, you know, built-in software to get it to work with a Pandora's box. You can be up and running for, uh, like, like, once you build this thing, you spend 80 bucks on a Pandora's box or whatever flavor and price point you want to buy on that. And all of a sudden, you've got a couple thousand games, and it took you two minutes to configure it. So it's going to be... <laughs> Real simple and easy. That's the base config in my opinion. And then you go to something like a single board computer, like a Raspberry Pi or a Odroid XU4 or Android box, or, you know, there are a dime a dozen on Amazon. It's whatever you want to spend and however many you want of games or how many games you want these days. And then finally, the, you know, big boy setup, you go to a gaming PC that can play the latest, uh, you know, Street Fighter 6 or Mortal Kombat 1 or Tekken 8, when those come out, you know, whatever you want to throw in this thing. That's what really makes these arcades uh, appealing, to, in my opinion, is it's DIY, so it can be whatever you want it to be. And, it, and it's accommodating. You spin it around, it's got an open back, and you just go to town. And you can even swap it back and forth. And then the screen's still big enough to play light gun games and pinball and all that stuff. Um, cause as we'll see in the future video, I'll go over how exactly these pinball buttons work. Cause I discovered how that works as well. <laughs> so stay tuned and, um, here, let me spin this back around. Thanks for watching guys. Do all the usual stuff. Check out all my links in the description below. I'm going to have a ton of stuff down there. I'm going to have the parts I used links to, uh, record masters, official videos for more information um stuff like that so just check all that stuff out it'll be like the monitor that i use the pandora's box uh, anything else that's uh, relevant and also any information that i might have glossed over or had to correct uh the one thing i did want to mention if you didn't read the uh, the subtitles the old company used to do pre-applied artwork and i think the new company new rec room masters you got to apply it yourself so that's a big difference no big deal. Artwork's easy, especially the air release vinyl stuff these days. Really easy to apply. He's got a nice video on how to do it. Um, even line it up with the uh, screws I mentioned earlier, stuff like that. So I can't wait to show you the, this build process because it, it it got easier. Uh, I will I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, it got easier to build by yourself, especially than the old Rec Room Masters cabinets. And there's just a ton of improvements that we didn't even see in the unboxing. So. Stay tuned, guys. Look for that video. I'll see you in the comment section below. Like, subscribe. Uh, check out, you know, my Etsy store for like on holsters and stuff like that. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.